G'day, fellas, and welcome to the N4C. This is set number two for today. The winner of this set is going to be going through to Berlin and going to be looking at taking their part in that $100,000 prize pool. Spawning in on the west side of the map, we've got Marine Lord in the color blue playing the Mongols, and on the opposite side of the map, in the color red, playing the French. Oh god, that was a while. That took me a while. It is Wham01. With me today is Nilly. Nilly, how are you doing? How are you feeling about this matchup? How's it going to go down? You tell me everything I need to know. <laughs> well, that's a big, big uh, task, right? And so much to be seen. Marine Lord, arguably the best player in the world right now. But oh boy, did Wham look strong yesterday. I became a huge, huge fan. And I would have thought, okay, Marine Lord would just easily win this one if you asked me like two days ago. But I think we have a great set on our hands. And Wham, maybe here to take lots of games? Maybe to take the whole set? Yeah, I am a big fan of Wham. Wham is one of those guys... He, we didn't really know much about him when he came in, but when he entered the room, everybody looked at him and they were like, whoa, that guy's good. Uh, he was really impressive and he took some serious games um, when he sort of initially came to the scene and, and took a lot of people by surprise. So yeah, I agree with you. I'm looking forward to it. I think he is, um, you know, when I saw his name in the, uh, in the qualifiers, I picked him out straight away. I said, this guy's going through. Uh, I'll expect to see him on day number two and he is here. So it's good to see that he is consistent. That is definitely one of the aspects of, uh, of his play style. But speaking of consistent, take a look at Marine Lord. He's got these double spears out already heading across the map. How do you feel about that? I want to get the aggressive tower up. Quite an interesting move. Wants to pressure the gold. And as we all know, French, if they want to go for their royal knights, they need that gold desperately. And we see Wham already trying to address that. Went for some spearmen here and already hurting the villager quite nicely down to 30 HP. Make it 28. Yeah, doing a pretty decent job already. I like that he's got the double spears out. He did open with the barracks very, very quickly, but keep in mind he's playing up against the Mongols, so it means that he's going to have a disadvantage when it comes to having the early unit production as we begin to see the next two spears coming in once again for Marine Lord, and he's got that number advantage uh, despite being, uh, I guess, down technically in production because Wham's created three spears, whereas technically he's only his uh, opponent has only created two, but he's got two for free out of thin air. Mm -hmm. And more to come. Two more on the way. Two more just popping now. And the Khan behind this one, obviously, really good at dealing damage. Villager really low, though. I wouldn't mind to see Marine Lord maybe send a high HP new Villager there for another attempt on the tower. But certainly the Khan doing so much damage against the Spearman. Yeah, this is going to be a massive issue, the Khan especially. It's something that we see throughout the game is just its ability to control the way that players engage. Uh, and you can see the way that he's, he's just focusing down the lower health uh, spear just over and over and over again and just working it down and eventually going to be able to pick it off and more spears coming in. But I will say Wham's done a pretty decent job because ideally what Marine Lord was looking to do was to isolate that gold, make sure that Wham wasn't going to be able to utilize it and he's stopped him from doing that at least for now. Mm hmm Yeah, delays this quite a bit. As we know, French, the economy can be crazy. Two spearmen were a bit out of position, but now taking the fight, kind of outnumbered. Khan is still doing something, and you can't really retreat it against that. Yeah, it makes it very hard. He's also got the access to the uh, maneuver arrow, uh, but yet to actually uh, to use it in the most recent fight. It's still got a couple seconds before he's able to pop it off, but I, th I think Wham's doing very well. Uh, the fact that he's been able to delay his opponent uh, at this point in time, uh, we can see that there is another villager coming out across the map it's got full health on it i don't think wham has realized that yet but i think he's actually just spotted it now the spearman gonna get straight onto it he says hey get away from me uh I, this is a no outpost zone you are not invited uh, let's see if he can keep it like that though because now three spearmen are scout in the can against two low hp scouts and now only two spearmen I don't think he will have the best day to kill that villager, especially because a new high HP one was sent. I think that tower should go up. Yeah. Now, I guess my next question is, if that tower does get up, what is Wham's fallback? And it looks like he's got some pretty safe gold mines. There's one down to the south of his base, which looks pretty safe. Uh, but he's also got one back behind his base as well, next to his berries. So I think even if, you know, worst case scenario, this outpost does get up, it's not going to be end of the world for Wham by any means. Uh, so I think he should be fine in that regard. It's just, he's obviously investing a lot of resources into defending this at the front, whereas the Mongols, a lot of these resources, they will get for free just because of that Uvu. 
Mm -hmm. Now the big question is, do you delete the mining camp or not? Yes. Like, okay, now it got hit, so you probably just let it burn. But otherwise, it's only 25 food, 25 gold that Mongols get nowadays. And sometimes it can maybe survive. But it just is such a nice target for those spearmen to attack. If we are not getting into the scenario that they actually have to fight. Yeah, it's 100% it's that it's going to go down and that bounty is going to come off. Uh, the, the first outpost is going to allow Marine Lord now to bunny hop up with his next outpost. And if things get bad on this front line, he's just going to be able to fall back towards that outpost. But he's got to be careful. That villager getting pretty low down to two health. He's going to try and get that bad boy inside. It looks like he manages to keep it alive. And it does remain up and going to continue firing down on those spears. Looks like Wham also going to be getting up to the second age now. So looking to potentially invest in an archery range and go in towards 1-1-1. So one barracks, one archery range, one stable in the form of a school of cavalry. And uh, really diversify his holdings. Hmm. Now the question is... Can you actually produce out of all those buildings? It feels like archers is the main unit, especially because you don't have the gold control. Horsemen could be only the, the other option out of the School of Cavalry. So you're probably better off to just focus on the archers, try to get a control here and wham. Well, he did go for the gold at the shop. Yeah, I, I think that the one thing for me that I'm always really cognizant of, especially when you're playing up against Mongols, is that this is all a distraction. Because behind this, Marine Lord is going to the Castle Age. And, you know, the resources that he's got stacked up there, you can see he's, he's slowly going for that Deer Stones. It's almost complete at the moment. Uh, but he's already got half the amount of gold he needs to get to the Castle Age. That's what he's thinking about. So the game plan for him is to just sort of, you know, he, he wants his enemy to make archers. He wants them to make horsemen or knights or do whatever they, it is they want into Age 2 because his real game plan is all about Age 3. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then men at arms can be crazy. Lancers may be an option. Depends a bit on what the army composition of the opponent is going to be. Marine Lord even dropping that double pasture here now goes for an archery range. So actually, he might try to build some army here to have a safer transition to Castle Age, but certainly ultimately that's his goal. Yeah, quite curious to see that coming out from him. He's got the uh, the arrow slits on the front line as well. Going to be able to hold that down. I don't think he's he's uh I don't think Wham's really gonna be able to break this outpost at the front unless he really, you know, invests a lot of resources into wanting to break it. So whether that means, you know, getting a lot of spears out, getting a lot of, of horsemen or knights out, whether that means getting some scouts out, which he's doing at the moment, he's actually got a couple of scouts out on the field, but the other alternative is going into a ram. That's a huge it's a huge amount of investment. Uh, you, you've got the 300 wood for the ram itself, the 150 for the blacksmith, and then you've got the tech as well. So it's quite a lot of resources that are sort of getting stacked up on top of it. Meanwhile, Marine Lords, you know, gonna be going up to the third age any second. Oh man, and why did he go for the archer range then? That's a bit surprising to me. And maybe, well, still the archer transition now goes for the blacksmith and just wants to be safe. We have professional scouts for Wham, but still won't send us to Castle Age nearly as quickly enough, enough as he wants to. Yeah, I think it's a curious decision, but it makes a lot of sense in that uh, it, he's just sort of going for safety. And he's going to be able to use these archers. So one of the things that we have been seeing these Mongol players do is go for this sort of archer ball timing push where they just push with veteran archers and just a handful of spears. And it, it kind of reminds me of the way that the English play, but uh, I guess it's just in the castle age is the only real difference. So we may potentially see that out of Marine Lord. Uh, he hasn't added any further infrastructure, but he is still constructing or still training those archers over and over and over again. He's used his entire... Um, his, his entire bank of stone on those archers um, and uh, yet to go for siege engineering but is going for that plus one piece armor or rather plus one piece mm -hmm. uh, ranged attack yeah, but siege engineering you need to make something happen out of that one the knight in the center kind of going for those archers but not really finding too much at least pushed away for now and wham really low in his resources Marine Lord? I'm a bit surprised that he's trying to move out here. It's it a bit risky. Yeah, I think so as well. Um, yeah, it, it becomes a really difficult situation for him. I think he might know that uh, that Wham is, is looking to secure these hunts up towards the north. You can actually see he's got line of sight on it from the Khan. In addition to having his... Uh, his yam speed network he's also got the khan ready to blow that maneuver arrow and chase these down and he is not letting him have this hunt so he's obviously brought in a couple of those deer already but uh thinking about the last three deer you will think again my friend 
But uh, now Marine Lord looking to run in. He pops off the movement speed arrow. Archer's going to be able to repel him here. There's quite a number of archers down here for Wham. Uh, but uh, Marine Lord going to be able to age up very shortly. You can see he's got the seven villagers down on gold. He is going to be absolutely fine and looking to age up within the next 30 seconds. And also, after he saw, okay, I can't really contest the deer at the top anymore. Now double tower there at the bottom. So kind of working on the gold from the right or from the bottom a bit more. Plus blocking the deer. So nice moves and nice map control by Marine Lord. Yeah, this is such a smart move. I really love the way that he's playing it. So you can see he's actually getting the arrow slits in. It's gonna, it should just be able to zone a couple of those villages off the gold mine. So, you know, we talked about this a little bit earlier in the game that you'd be able to have your secondary gold uh, down in this position. But uh, obviously Marine Lord, he ain't no slouch when it comes to that. And he is going to prevent that from happening. But uh, in the middle of the map, it looks like Marine Lord loses a, a couple of units here. Some reinforcements going to get taken out by Wham. But I think the loss of the tower might be even the bigger thing. Archers are around and... Well, we'll certainly find the kill against the outpost there with all the scouts. It's interesting how Marine Lord, although up to Castle Age, is still so active on the map, simply trusts the movement speed of his yeah. army to yeah. disengage if it gets into a tricky spot. You can see he's already got the maneuver arrow back. He's out in the Yam network. What's the worst thing that's going to happen, Nilly? He's going to pop his maneuver arrow. He's going to be out of here. He's going to be so quick when he does it as well. So I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, he, he, he's not going to get caught with his pants down at all out here. He's going to be perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, feels like it. Wham still produces more knights. Now goes for hardened spearmen. Wow, and archers. So he fully commits to fuel age. Really, second barracks. He's f expecting a full land scroll in. But actually, there's no real play from Marine Lord. Now a market, and that's kind of it. There's no extra production. Yeah, a bit of a strange, uh, strange decision to go into the market. Is he going for a second town center? He's stacked up 800 wood right here it, wow. it could be a second town center that he's thinking about unless he's just gonna sell a whole bunch but it, it's very strange to see you know marine lord is considered by many to be the best player in age of empires 4 but mm -hmm. i i would not expect him to be miss macroing 800 wood in a tournament game where there's potentially a hundred thousand dollars on the line so yeah this is a bit bit curious surely it's got to be a second town center right nearly it has to be like he also didn't add any military so everything indicates into that direction maybe something next to the berries there next to his wood line maybe at the top next to his deer there are certainly some spots and he still knows wham's army all at home he has oh. all the control in the world take a look at the base of marine lord right now he's just woken up he must have fallen asleep at the keyboard and he said oh my lord i've got a lot of resources in the bank i'm gonna drop down three archery rangers uh, that's a lot of archery rangers. What's he going to be doing with this? So, is, is the plan to go into crossbows? Is he going to go into that archer push himself that we talked about? You can see he's got the veteran archers already researched. Uh, does have plus, or he's got uh, plus one ranged armor on the way. Could have plus two very shortly as well. Does he have enough answers to the knights, though, is the big question. Even if you go four archer rangers archers in Castle Age, I think knights are still doing reasonably well against you. So, maybe some more buffer in front could be nice. Wham! Still in Feudal Age, still producing here. Oh no, actually now, stop producing. Yeah, so stop producing is up to almost 700 gold now. Uh, and about halfway on the food as well. Does spot the men-at-arms coming out uh, from his opponent. But one of the things I do like that he's doing, he is walling up the back of his base. And I think this is very smart against Mongols. Obviously the most mobile of all the civilizations. I think it's really important when you are playing against these Mongol players, make sure that you've got your walls going down just to stop them, delay them. Even if, you know, they're probably going to get through the walls, but that's okay. They're going to be delayed. And that's what the important part is. It's going to allow you to, to answer their questions a lot sooner. But speaking of questions that need to be answered, take a look at the front of the base right now for Wham. As these forces move in from Marine Lord, he might be in a bit of a difficult spot here. The wall is going up, but I think he's going to be able to be okay in this position, Nilly. Uh, one villager down, two villagers down, and army basically went through without any losses, and now it's regrouping. I'm still surprised that Wham is so late to Castle Age. Was just playing this long Feudal Age, but then decided better of it. And now a veteran archer man at arm combo. Really good against what Wham has on the field right now. Yeah, I, I have a very big concern right now, and that is Siege Engineering Improved is coming in 
right now. There Ooh. is uh, there is less than five seconds for it to go before that is online. And once that is online, you can expect that there is going to be an absolute huge amount of mangonels that get thrown down. Uh, and that is just going to be a serious cause for concern. Actually, we're just going to see a battering ram, it looks like, from, from Marine Lord at this stage. Mm, interesting choice. I think Mangonels would have felt very reasonable. Maybe felt okay. I already have men at arms and battering archers. I will do fine against feudal archers. I think I want to pressure you out of position. Knows, okay, lots of houses there at the top. I can pressure the wood line as well. Maybe wants to kill the blacksmith early on. Certainly a really strong army by Marine Lord here. Yeah, yeah, it's looking very formidable. But one of the other interesting things to note is that Wham is going for the Royal Institute. So he's aging up. And normally what we would see out of French players is the Guild Hall. We would very rarely see the Royal Institute, but it looks like Wham has gone for that option today. Uh, so curious to see whether he's going to be going for uh, Royal Bloodlines. It looks like he's going to be starting off with uh, Candled Saddles. Uh, so it gets that nice little discount in there, but uh, doesn't really give you a lot of efficiency. The first Manganel going to be rolling in here nearly. This is, uh, this is where it starts to get scary for Wham because one wrong move and his entire army is wiped out in a single blow. Oh, yo, yo, I don't really think he wants to take that fight here. Archers, oh, a bit out of position. Mangonel, ooh, Oof. dodges for now. Now the Royal Knights are coming in, but lots of villager losses. Yeah, huge amounts of villagers dying there on the wood line. And if he's not paying attention, that Mangonel, the Mangonel, the Mangonel gets off a massive shot and takes out about three or four archers on the ground. You can see how many of those guys have left with about 50% health now, just barely surviving. And keep in mind that the strength of the Mangonel comes in not from the kills that it gets, but from the damage it provides on all those other units because now they're all very weak and just a tap away from being killed. And you can see that uh, Marine Lord here is looking incredibly strong. Wham trying his best to clean this up. He's got a couple knights back here, but it's such a difficult spot for him. He's lost a lot of villagers. 26 idols at the moment. Is there any way he can pull this back, Nelly? Oh, feels very unlikely. Only archers in the field, no real upgrades. All the knights are dying as well. And there's so much army in your base. 96 population against 56. More and more villagers falling. This one looks really good for Marine Lord. Marine Lord looking incredibly strong and wham taps out. First game in the set going over to Marine Lord. So big congratulations over to him winning with the Mongols. And I will suspect that uh, most people probably predicted that. This is a tough matchup for the French, but... Uh, Marine Lord played it pretty immaculately, I'd say. Also, really tricky matchup if you have this open gold spot. Makes yes. it so tricky to deal with. You kind of have to go for Spearman, and then the can just becomes so efficient. The tower is constantly threatened, and the moment one tower goes up, it feels like you're constantly on the back foot. Yeah, yeah, that that is exactly it. it, it it's such a difficult combination to deal with. The tower aggression the early spears where you're always outnumbered, you know, the, the transition, the seamless transition into the second age, the option to throw out archers if you need to, straight up into the third age. And then, of course, you've got improved siege engineering, which means you've got those mangonels right on the front line. You don't have to worry about building that siege workshop back there. So it makes it very easy to transition that into just such a big tempo push. And that's exactly what he did. Played it perfectly. Well played to Marine Lord. I don't know about you, Nilly, but I'm looking forward to the second game. Uh, so do I. I still like this is this is such a weird game that he was floating like 900 wood, then triple archer range drop down in the end, crazy KD for him, and it it felt like indecisiveness, or he was like looking for more information and was trying to find out like what is what are you going for, and then against French decided on quadruple archer range, veteran archers. Okay. Yeah, I can I can see that working. I can, I can see that. I guess that explains I it. I saw it working. 